to the Runner X podcast, where we talk about all things running. As many runners know, it's 90% mental. So join Coach Valerie and Coach Caroline as we go through the mental side of running. Welcome back to the Runner X podcast. I'm your host, Coach Caroline, and I'm talking to Coach Valerie. Coach, you were just recently talking about, um, we were joking that none of us is Iliad Kipchoge, right? <laughs> <laughs> so go go with that. What were you trying to say with that um, when we were talking? Well, what I was trying to say is, so when we when we work with runners, we do what's, what's called a gait analysis, and we also do check-ins. And what happens is when someone sees themselves, and you've probably seen this in your race pictures, we immediately look for the negative, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I look like that, or I was doing that, which is why I tell people, you have to let your coach look at your check-in and your running, <laughs> right. and then I want to help you with feeling. So Caroline, for example, was doing some shuttle runs the other day. And to be honest, she doesn't do shuttle runs as a regular part of her workout. However, she was being very efficient in her movement. So I said, you're doing great, Caroline. And she said, but I bet if you had filmed me, you could have found all kinds of errors. So I was teasing and saying, well, we can't all be Elliot Kipchoge. Yeah. And my, my point of that is that everyone has something, right? The way we move, it's not always perfect. The challenge we have is knowing what we're supposed to be doing really while we're running. And so I think for some runners, what really, how do you know you had a good run? Like that would be a fun question to ask people when you finish a run and you say, that was a really good run. What is it that you felt that made it a good run? And I think for some of our runners, it's just the fact that they completed it maybe in the time frame they wanted, and then also without hurting themselves. Would you agree? Right. And then the challenge is, since we usually meet runners when they're unfortunately with some kind of pain or something's happening in their run so that they didn't have a good run, we have to actually reteach people how running's supposed to feel. And we right. get really, we get away from that as we get older because we start running based on our heart rate or uh, that's a big one or this uh, time frame or how many miles we're going to run. So then a lot of us just kind of make up our own movement for our yeah. running. So then really what they're feeling while they're running, the satisfaction is the completion of the task. Yeah. Right. I mean, and that's important. And then when you start to work with us and we help you reconnect with what running's supposed to feel like, how it can feel like, how you do feel like what the, what you want your picture to look like, you know, that, that picture that we're not sometimes, but your legs are separated, you're smiling, the hair, your hair is blowing back. Right. So it's yeah. like, we, we, I tell people like to feel that you actually have to go through the motions of movement of how to learn how to run again. And when you're a kid, it's just natural, right? When people say that to me a lot, by the way, they say, um, running's natural. Like we all know how to run. Like, well, at one point we all did know how to run, but then we kind of got out of that. And so running is natural. However, unfortunately, as an adult, you kind of have to take yourself back to that. And then I think the best part of what we do with our program is we help you feel how running can feel. And we do that through these drills. We take you through these drills that put you in this movement pattern that actually looks just like Elliot's Kipchoge's. <laughs> yeah. So you can kind of feel what that feels like. And then you live your version of it because you can run how fast you can run or how far you can run. And that's the best part is when we see people shift to where instead of their satisfaction only coming from my completed my run to how they felt while they were running is really powerful. I was going to say, that's always the, the ones that get me overclumped is when they say, <laughs> oh, my God, it felt it felt effortless. You know, regardless of that, I had no pain. It's when they say it felt effortless or right. I I had so much joy. Um, we've had people say, uh, who is it? Uh, one of our more recent ones that she went running and it felt easy. But then she looked at her heart rate like we brought her up in the heart rate conversation because she was like, but then my heart rate was really high. But it was like, but did you feel good? Yeah. Then it didn't matter. because <laughs> She actually right. felt uh, maybe her heart rate was up because she was feeling so much joy. Um, but th that's actually almost even better than saying my knee didn't hurt. 
Um, it's when they are coming back and saying, I felt, uh, I felt good. I felt, um, I felt like I could go farther. Right. They, yeah. they, they find that joy of running. That is really the reason why we're here, isn't it? And a hundred percent. And to think about, you know, I always tell people I started out my exercise career with with what I call now mindless movement. Like I taught group fitness classes mm-hmm. back then; they were called aerobics classes, step classes, high impact, low impact. And you would take people through a movement without, like, there wasn't any I say meaning behind it. But you know, I would do things like you know, knees, jacks, lunge, you know, whatever. <laughs> like you're dancing, you're, and everyone knew the combination. Like I would teach you, here's you know, we're going to step touch, then we're going to grapevine. So then you could go step touch, step touch, grapevine and add a clap or whatever. And it was so much fun because the people weren't emotive with it. Like, okay, here's the movement. She teaches us the movement. We do the movement and the success was in putting it all together. So when I started um, coaching runners, because we're all supposed to know how to run, there was always this resistance to actually working on their running movement. And yeah, what happens is when you come in to run RX and you're open to that idea that there are movements that help you get better at, at running and running actually is a movement that you've never been taught. None of us were really taught how to run. You were just told to go run. Right. So then how do you know what to feel when you run? How do you know what to do? You know, so then all of a sudden when I give you that to do, I'm telling you, it really shifts your whole run into one, you know what to do. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm feeling those things I heard about. <laughs> right. Right. So that's what we love about what we teach is that we give you the drills. So you feel running, you feel what it's supposed to feel like. Then you have an ability to go out and recreate that for however long you want to go. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Okay, guys. So if you haven't already subscribed, we hope you will subscribe to the podcast. Give us a five-star review. It helps others find us when you review us. And if you have any questions that you would like for us to answer on our podcast, you can email us at support at runrx.fit. That's support at R-U-N-R-X dot F-I-T. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on the RunRx podcast. If you'd like to know more, join us at www.runnerx.fit. And if you have additional questions that you'd like answered on the podcast, email us at support at runnerx.fit. 